Hello friends, welcome back. Welcome to this series which I named as Concepts of CISP. This is domain 3 and in domain 3 we will be dealing with security architecture and engineering. Architecture and engineering sounds interesting but before we dive in into domain 3 I will just give you a very very high level quick recap of domain 1 and domain 2. So what we studied in domain 1 was the foundation which is going to be followed in rest of the domain. Right. So we discussed about the principles of information security and how these principles take shape of a security framework and how the framework can be used to design security policy of a specific company or an, a specific organization. With, with that in mind, then we looked into different governance strategies, how these security policies can set into action to achieve organizational business goal. Right? So that was the crux of domain one. There are different security principles like we discussed about the principle of confidentiality, integrity, availability, non-repudiation, authenticity. So those kind of things we studied in domain one. Then in domain two, we looked into asset security. In asset security, we specifically look into the life cycle of a data or information how it flows in an organization and what are the different security controls we put in to ensure that we achieve organizational uh, organizations desired cia level now in domain three what we are going to do is we are going to study more about what are the different architecture and frameworks and what are the different security models we use in achieving the desired security outcome of an organization so we will be dealing with two key terms here so these two key terms are architecture and engineering right we all have a very rough idea of what is architecture and engineering but if we look into the perspective of cissp we will see that security architecture and engineering if we look into what is uh what is architecture so the architecture is basically design and organization of components processes and services right this is what security architecture is we are designing and we are putting that design into some sort of a structural organization a high level block diagram so that will give rise to security architecture right so when we talk about security architecture we'll be talking about components processes and services and what is engineering engineering is basically the implementation part of the security architecture so implementation is not in the architecture it's the next phase of security overall security solution designing so designing is first we make a blueprint which is architecture and what we do in architecture we do design an organization of component processes and services and then we implement those component processes and services using some standard methodology that is the engineering methodology this is what we are going to do in coming discussions in domain 3 there are more interesting things which is going to come we will be discussing about what are the principles of engineering what are the principles of architecture so these two things will follow as we have seen the principles of information security and how these principles give rise to um, security framework or policy the same way we have to look into what are the different principles of security architecture and what are the different principles of security engineering and how this can give rise to a secure system basically the term architecture and engineering give an impression that we are going to design some product right but when it comes to CISSP and CISSP exam in a specific, we are not dealing with designing a security product, but our approach is a bit, uh, you know, bit backwards, right? So we are actually dissecting the, the product or services to see how the security is engineered and how it is implemented, right? So we should not have this idea in our mind that we are going to design a secure product right designing a secure product also need information or also need knowledge which is a part of cissp curriculum 
but from the 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 world where cissp professionals are going to operate majority of the you know uh, domains that is basically the implementation and uh, you know the when we talk of the architecture we are basically not architecting a, a, a semiconductor chip or architecting a computer that also requires the foundational understanding of how we architect something securely or how we implement something securely but here we are using those blocks those components in achieving one organization's security objective so our understanding of architecture and implementation is basically the if you want to have some sort of idea is like the way we architect a cloud service in azure and aws we take different services and we kind of have this lego life like um, you know design in in on a visio or on a drawing board and then we see that what security objectives we are going to achieve right so this is this is the way we will be going into it so we will be discussing principles then we will be discussing how these principles are modeled using some industry models industry uh, approved architectural designs and how these are getting implemented right so straight if we go into my drawing board here um let's go to my drawing board now if you see here i have explained that security architecture and engineering is basically the design and organization of component processes and services this is something which you should keep in mind as a definition and when it comes to engineering engineering is basically the implementation of the design and organization right so so any creation which we conceive which we um which we actually produce is a two step process first we think of it we make some sort of blueprint which is architecture then we go for implementation and we implement it right there is a famous saying that twice measure twice and hammer once right so the great deal of attention has to be given into the architecture phase of the of the process and then we implement it if we have given enough consideration enough security consideration in architecting a service our implementation will be easy there will be no rework but if the architecture is made in hurry to achieve business objective and security is made in corner and we are kind kind of piggyback security while the implementation is in progress there those that is that's going to create many problems right now the process of security architecture when it comes to an organization or uh, or a company it it follows with three different steps first we do the risk assessment then we identify and agree on the identified risk and then we address the risk using some secure design we go with the standard security um you know uh, mitigation processes like either we accept security uh, accept uh, the identified risk or we avoid the risk or we mitigate the risk or we transfer the risk right so all these can be addressed with a secure design as well right so the secure secure design addresses the how we actually address the identified risk of a of a system or of an organization right now secure design principles as i already explained that the principles goes with what we have studied in uh, domain 1 that we have got information security principles and then it take a form of a framework and that gives rise to a policy and policy is used to govern the organization right similarly we have got design principles here right that when we talk of design principles there are two major bodies of principles two major bodies of knowledge which produces these kind of principles we should be aware of one is salzer and schroder's uh, uh, principle and another, another is iso iec 1924 2017 uh, set of design principle right now we will look into look briefly into these principles what are these principles when it comes to salzer and schroder's principles there are basically eight uh, eight uh, architectural principle plus two more architectural principle which they borrowed from physical security now these eight architectural principles are economy of mechanism fail safe defaults complete mediation open design separation of privilege least privilege least common mechanism psychological acceptability and then the two more which is added afterwards is work factor and compromise recording these two principle which is principle number 9 and 10 
it is coming tra from traditional physical security space right when it comes to iso iec 19249 uh, design principles so they actually uh, differentiate between what is architectural principle and what are design principles so in architectural principles they have got five distinct principles which are domain separation layering encapsulation redundancy and virtualization right when it comes to design principles though they have least privilege attack surface minimization centralized parameter validation centralized general security services and prepare, preparing for error and exception handling so these are the design and architecture principles outlined into iso iec 19249 right so i explained you that there are two major bodies of knowledge one is iso iec 19249 and another is salson and schroeder's principle right you can refer official cbk book for more details on this and we will be going into each and every principle to better understand and how cissp questions are framed across these principles the other other major thing which you should know as part of understanding the design principles and design models is something called trusted system so what is a trusted system a trusted system is a computer system that can be trusted for a specified extent to enforce a specified security policy right so it's a theoretical concept right if you are creating any computer system or if you are creating an architecture which is giving a service now in that architecture if the the concept of trusted system is a system which is doing computing basically a computer system and which can be trusted to certain extent right which is uh, referred in the definition as that can be trusted to a specified extent to enforce a specified security policy because we can't have a situation of 100 percent policy or zero percent policy we have to agree on a baseline and that baseline will tell us what is the specified security policy and with that specified security policy the level of trust we can we can uh, get from the system is an attribute of the trusted system now the trusted system uh, make use of uh, of a term which is called reference monitor we should also know this so what is reference monitor reference monitor is basically an entity or a component of a trusted system reference monitor is the logical heart of the computer system and it is responsible for all the decisions related to access control so whenever you you hear this term reference monitor immediately you should know that this is a component which is majorly or primarily dealing with the access control to the trusted system right so reference monitor is a module or an entity or a component of a trusted system which is making decisions for access control right who can access what resource for what time with what privilege or what authorization levels so this thing will be the topic of reference monitor now a trusted system has a reference monitor with that there are certain expectations from trusted system and what are those expectations from trusted system so the trusted system should be tamper proof it should always be invoked which we will be discussing more in the uh, in the shortest principle we'll see there is a term called complete mediation we'll see how this happens so it should be first tamper proof it should be or it should always be invoked and it should be a small enough to be tested independently right if the if the trusted system is big enough that you can't test trusted system firmware separately then it's uh, its purpose actually uh, it defies its purpose right now in 1983 actually uh, uh, united states Demar uh, department of defense they published orange book also called techsec you know techsec is a short form of trusted computing system evaluation criteria it gives actually um, a, you know it describes the feature and assurances that the users could expect from a trusted system right basically it gives a sort of a scale on a benchmark to measure how trusted a system is or how a user can trust a system to what level right now trusted system is basically i already explained what is trusted system reference monitor and what are the expectation from trusted system now with this trusted system 
when it comes to tech sec they actually produced a term which is called trusted computing computing base a trusted computing base is a combination of hardware and software and firmware responsible for information system security policy so you may have a system it may have some functional part it may have some input output memory cpu and everything but there has to be a, a portion of the system which is responsible for um for the for the security of the system right and that of that portion is called trusted computing base it may not be only one chip it may be a a combination of different systems or a part of different uh, chips it may be like you have a cpu you have some registers in the cpu and some component of the cpu is responsible for interrupt signals control or access control that will that will be a part of of what we call reference uh, reference monitor basically so that will form um, a set of components which will which we will call as a tcb right now the level of assurance we have in a computing system is having an inverse relation with uh, with the size of tcb if the trusted computing base is is very small it's very easy for us to uh, test it independently if you look into the uh, trusted system expectation you will see that the third point is that it should be small enough to be tested independently now if trusted computing base is small enough it's good but the thing is uh, there is a there is a principle which says that if we make TCP as small as possible, then the surrounding hardware and software will become very big. So we have to make a compromise that how small we can make a trusted computing base. And as you see here, like assurance is inversely proportional to the size of TCP. So if the size of TCP goes down, the assurance level goes up. But as size of the TCB goes down, then the size of the surrounding hardware and software also goes up. So this is one trade-off and then we have also a benefit that the, the smaller the size of TCB, the higher assurance we have into the system. This is something we should be aware of about trusted system and the security principles which I talk about in the two in two different bodies of knowledge, which is Salzer and Schroeder's principle and ISO IEC 19249. I will see you in next video where I will be dissecting these principles and we will be dissecting a bit more about uh, the different models which uh, these principles actually where these principles are getting use of and we will progress into the domain 3. As always thanks for watching the video please like share and subscribe the channel and if you find this video useful please share with your friends who are also preparing for CISSP and again Best of luck for the CISSP exams.